Hi everyone and welcome back to the London Watch Collector channel. If you've just tuned in to my channel, I'm a watch collector, a watch enthusiast, I'm basically addicted to watches. And on my channel, I'll be sharing my passion for watches using 4K content. I'll be discussing and showing you brilliant timepieces ranging from Seiko to Patek Philippe. So guys, if you enjoy my reviews, please subscribe to my channel. Make sure to click on the notification bell and follow me on Instagram. So guys, here is the full review of the Rolex Explorer that I bought back in June on the 15th of June to be exact. Initially, I had planned to showcase the three ever strap that was sent out to me a couple of weeks ago, but I decided I'm going to keep that for next week because I have a nice surprise for you guys. Something crazy happened with my Rolex Explorer. Let's just say it's to do with a one year old and the kitchen. For now, that's all I'll tell you, but I'm looking forward to uploading that next week and I'll be combining how to fit the ever straps. But for this week, we're going to do the usual. We're going to give you the full unboxing experience and talk to you about the watch, a bit of history. So without further ado, starting with the sleeve that covers the outer box. And you're presented with the cream Rolex box. Once you open it up, that's the receipt from Harrods. That's where I picked it up from, hence the carrier bag as well. I paid £5,200. And then you have the Rolex catalog for the Explorer, which is very simple because it doesn't have any complication. So it just tells you the time, but it gives you an idea on the EasyLink Comfort Extension Link. This is one of the only watches I've been sleeping with in the last couple of weeks. During the day, I wear it without the Comfort Extension Link off. Just before I go to bed, I open the extension link, gives me that extra flexibility on the wrist and makes it extremely comfortable. Why am I suddenly wearing a watch while I sleep? The reason for that is our son started sleeping in his own room and sometimes he wakes up during the night and when I go to him, the loom on this watch is just fantastic. And I'm talking around three in the morning whereby it's already been six hours of darkness. But moving on guys, once you open up the box, inside this plastic pouch, I have the two links, the white tag, as well as the green seal, and of course the bezel protector. At the back is the leather pouch, whereby you have your guarantee card, which by the way has been changed. So any watch being picked up will have a new guarantee card because Rolex and Tudor actually upgraded their guarantee cards. So the new ones actually don't have a name of the purchaser or the name of the retailer. And I'm not really a fan of, I feel that Rolex should have kept the name of the purchaser because it's more of a personal touch. I like having all my watches under my name and it's a nice touch, especially when you pass it on to your children and they pass it down to your grandchildren children. But anyway guys, there you have it. That's the Rolex Explorer reference 214270. So before I go into the history, I'm going to cover the full specs of the watch briefly. The model case is an Oyster 39mm, so-called as Oyster steel, which basically means it's stainless steel, but that's what Rolex calls it. The Oyster architecture is a monoblock middle case, screw down case back, and the winding crown. As I mentioned, the diameter is a 39 millimeter. The bezel you see is a smooth bezel. The winding crown is a screw down, twin lock, double waterproofness system. So giving you 100 meters or 330 feet. The crystal is a scratch resistant sapphire crystal. The movement is the famous 3132 movement, which has been around for ages. It's the same movement on the no date sub and other models as well, including the Air King, Oyster Perpetual, etc. But the movement is a perpetual mechanical self-winding. The precision it has is a plus two minus two seconds per day, which beats the COSC certification. The function is a center hour, minute and seconds hands. It has the stop seconds or as they call it as the hacking for precise time settings. So the oscillator it has is a paramagnetic blue parachrome hairspring. The winding is a bi-directional self-winding via a perpetual rotor and the power reserve is approximately 48 hours. It's enough to build that the 3132 movement is going to get upgraded in the near future. We're probably going to see the subs getting an upgrade this year because it's way overdue. Most of the other models have already gotten the upgrade and I'm not really sure what would Rolex do with the Explorer, but I'm quite confident that the Explorer 2 will be getting a ceramic bezel, but it's very interesting to see what will they be doing to this Explorer and I can't wait to find out. Moving on to the bracelet. So the bracelet is an Oyster flat three-piece link and it's made out of 904L stainless steel 
steel or so-called oyster steel. The clasp is the folding oyster lock safety clasp with an easy link giving you 5mm comfort extension link. The dial is a black dial which has the matte finish rather than the glossy finish. It has a high legible chromolite display with a long lasting blue luminescence. So why did I buy this watch? And after owning it for roughly a month, am I happy with it or not? To be honest guys, this watch became my daily wearer from the moment I picked it up. And I'm not exactly sure why, but any of you guys who owns the Rolex Explorer will understand where I'm coming from. Because it's a very understated, versatile watch that does not have that blink factor or look at the watch I'm wearing. You actually wear this watch feeling comfortable and the black dial along with the stainless steel just blends nicely on a watch. People around you won't even know you're wearing a Rolex until they see the Rolex logo at the 12 o'clock. And another thing is the lightness of this watch, the size of it, the 39 millimeter being a completely brushed bracelet so you don't worry about the polycentralings getting the hairline scratches. They're Therefore, I've really been enjoying this watch, as I said, wearing it for the last month or so, and it's definitely here to stay. To me, this would be within the top five modern Rolex watches that I own, which I'm planning to do a review probably in the near future, whereby I reveal my favorite five Rolex modern watches. And I believe this owns a place in the top five. And as I said in the review, when I picked up the watch, me trying to refine my collection, which is probably out of the window because things Thinking about it, I couldn't really go ahead with it. So for now, the idea is out of the window, but I did get rid of my no date sub. I actually sold it to a close friend because he's always wanted one. He was happy because he didn't have to pay a premium for it. And I was happy because I sold it to him for the same amount that I bought it for. So I didn't lose any money. This is the watch I feel would be appropriate to hand on to my son on his 18th birthday because it's quite underrated. Wouldn't be too flashy him wearing it to college, for example. This would be the perfect perfect watch to hand it on at the right age rather than giving him a shiny Skydweller or a Daytona or a Patek AP etc. So from now until then another 17 years I'm going to be enjoying this watch. It's probably going to go for a service or two in between so we're going to get probably a new smooth bezel maybe even get a nice polish. Let's just see. So giving you a bit of history it all started back in 1953 when two famous explorers so-called Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay climbed Mountain Everest back in 1953. And that's where the explorer has its tie with Mountain Everest because of these two pioneer explorers. But basically it started with the reference 6610 which was first presented in 1959 and it replaced the 6150. Back then it did have the 3, 6 and 9 on the dial as you can see from the photo, but the case is actually 36. Fast forward to 1963, the Rolex Explorer reference 1016 was in a long production up to 1989 and it had the caliber 1560 back then and it still had the same waterproofness like today which is 100 meters and believe it or not it had the hacking feature as well. And the 1016 was in production for roughly around 25 years and at the end of the 25 years of manufacturing it started having solid links on the oyster bracelet and then in the 1980s we saw the reference 14270 and that's when Rolex started using precious metal. When I say precious metal I mean the 18 carat white gold 3, 6 and 9 as well as the hour indices because Rolex realized that they started fading away so they started using precious metal for the markers. And the reference 14270 had the caliber 3000 and then in 2001 we saw an upgrade the 114270 which was equipped with a new caliber the 3130. And then in 2010, the reference 214270 was introduced, having a big upgrade because it went from a 36mm up to a 39mm. Other changes like the Explorer moving from the 12 o'clock down to the 6 o'clock. The 3, 6 and 9 numerals had no longer luminescent and they were completely made out of white gold. But then in 2016, Rolex reintroduced the luminescent 3, 6 and 9 and that's the current model you see in front of you. And I feel that was a very good move from Rolex 
works because the watch wouldn't be as visible at night without the 3, 6 and 9 being luminescent. Honestly to me this watch is all about the luminescent but I'm glad Rolex decided to bring back the luminescent. I did not go into a huge in depth because I didn't want this review to be a very long one but if you guys would like to see more of the Explorer do let me know and of course guys no review is complete without a wrist shot and as I said in this review I'm loving this watch I don't think it's gonna be a honeymoon phase like the deep sea James Cameron I hope you enjoyed this review guys that's all for this week thank you for watching